Hey guys and welcome. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the sodium ion battery. Now, it's something really exciting at the moment. If you don't know at all, if you're into electric cars, BYD have made a commitment they're going to change all their vehicles to sodium ion. Now, in the next few weeks, I'm actually getting this installed in my house to do some testing. Now, it's going in my house. I'm a hybrid customer, is what you'd probably call. So we have the grid available as a backup source. So we use the grid as our generator. We're actually installing two of these into a research site which is completely off-grid. I've got a research site which has about eight dwellings on it. We have all different battery technologies on it. And we've been testing those batteries over the years which is pretty exciting. If you want to know more about all the ins and outs of all these different technologies, I've got eight different properties on this research site. We've got all different batteries and we're monitoring all the different battery technologies and how they're performing. Now over the years I've helped thousands of people design and install off-grid solar systems. We've got lots of data out there and if it's something that you're really interested in and want to join the community, you can jump over here and actually join our off-grid tribe community. This is where a load of our customers over the years have actually joined in. They've got a community there. They can share ideas of all the stuff they've used. They can share with you all the ideas that have worked for them over the years, things that haven't worked. You can jump in and join this community where you'll get first-hand experience of people that have actually used all this technology and their experiences from it. Some good, some bad, some amazing. So it's a really good community to jump in there and actually meet people that have used this product over the years. Now let's talk about these batteries and what is actually really exciting, I suppose, why everyone's so excited about them. The biggest thing that excites me about this stuff is the embodied energy. Now, one of the things that for me as a business owner, when I was doing this stuff and supplying products that I really focused on, I wanted to know what was the embodied energy that it took to make that product and then how long it took to pay back its environmental impact. Back in the day, we used to supply a product called thin film solar panels. They actually have the lowest embodied energy on the marketplace. They're an amazing panel. They didn't do too well because Everyone would say, well, that's a 140 watt solar panel and these ones are 250 watt solar panel for about the same size space, which efficiency is important when you're dealing with a small roof space. Now, thin film panels had a really low embodied energy. One of the other things with thin films, which was really deceiving, is that the hotter they get, the better they work. And that was actually one of the biggest problems and why I love them. We installed loads of them over the years because for us, when I looked at the data, the low embodied energy, but also as well, they'd actually perform really well when they get hot. So when they get hot, they actually did better. So give an example, my house in Sydney, when I was off grid in the middle of Sydney, I had a three kilowatt solar system and on a really good day, the panels would do about 4,500 watts. So I'd actually install a bigger inverter to get maximum to the panels because the hotter they got, the better they performed. Where typical panels, everything's tested in a factory 25 degrees and same with the thin film panels. At 25 degrees, they didn't perform so well. But at 60, 70 degrees, I think it was 70 degrees when they started to deteriorate their performance. Where a typical panel, as it gets hotter, as the day gets on, it actually gets worse and worse and worse. It doesn't really actually get better. So a lot of the big companies around the world, Shell Shower was a huge investor in the technology. They sort of just put it to the side and a lot of people didn't do it because installers or people selling the product. And it's one of the biggest things that I've learned over the years and a lot of companies that become really good products, like Tesla as an example. Tesla have made it really easy for the installer. So the installers want to sell their products. Are they the best thing for the customer some of the times? No. But because the companies actually create these products that are the best thing for the installer, the installer says, hey, this is the best product because it's the best thing for them to install. I actually went through a training with Tesla back in 2015, 16 in Australia. And one of the biggest things that I learned that day is that the installer was Tesla's customer, not the end user. And a lot of manufacturers are the same because they make the installer's job easy because at the end of the day, the installers are the salespeople that go out and sell these things. So they want to make it as easy as possible for that installer to install that job so they can get on to the next one. It's all about saving time, which is money, and so on and so on. So products like these sodium ion batteries really have their work cut out to get end users excited about them, but also get the installers excited about this product. One thing for me, when I started reading the documentation and require I've got to install this, it's 170 kilos. <laughs> So yeah, so installing a 170 kilo product, getting off the back of your ute, truck, van, whatever, out into where it's got to go at your house can be a bit of a challenge and something to think about. But let's talk a bit about the technology. Now, what's really cool about these, they're actually made with no lithium, no cobalt or copper. So there's a lot of heavy metals there. So the embodied energy that it takes to make these products is going to be a really fast payback period, which is pretty exciting. Now, one of the downsides with the sodium ion battery is it doesn't have a high discharge current like the LiPo4s or the lithium type products. And what I've seen, the research I've done, and from my understanding, 
BYD have said they're going all in on sodium iron and they think it's the future. And what I've seen, if you think about it like this, I think what they're actually doing currently at this point in time is actually mixing technologies, which is a great idea. They're using both battery chemistries within the same battery to make it work. So they're getting the benefit, the low cost sodium iron long lasting, but they're also getting the ability of that lithium battery, which has that high discharge current. If you think about this, the benefit of that high discharge current, if you floor your car, that takeoff speed that you get, it's all gonna come down to the battery being able to give you all that power all at once. So in a home situation off grid, it's like turn on a kettle, a big air conditioner, a world or something like that, the battery is gonna to need to deliver you a high current very fast. I think with the current sodium ion batteries at the moment, that's what they're really gonna struggle with, is be able to deliver that high current really fast in those situations. I know in the lab with the technology, they're competing with lithium in the lab, but I think we're still yet to see in a commercial situation that really compete with the lithium ion at the moment. And I think that's why BYD have done something amazing mixing technologies. Now, I'll give you an example for mixing technologies. If you think about a hybrid vehicle, I actually have a Tesla, I own an EV, I love EVs, don't get me wrong. I'm actually a really big fan of hybrids. No one's actually made a really good hybrid out there. When I'm talking a hybrid, I'm talking a plug-in hybrid. Now, I think EVs are really good for smaller vehicles, and I think as we get bigger vehicles, and I think all these cars like F, Ford, Ram, and all that sort of stuff, I think they've actually gone down the wrong path by trying to create all these big vehicles. Because the problem with the bigger vehicles, the bigger the vehicle, everyone's gonna take the kitchen sink with them every time they go away, the more weight, the more battery you're gonna use, more capacity. So there's been some examples in YouTube videos out there of people that with the new F-150 Lightnings where they drive for an hour, charge for three, drive for an hour, charge for three. And I'm talking on fast charges here because they've loaded their vehicles up, put all this extra weight in and the batteries just use a lot more capacity. So I think we're just not there with battery capacity right now. And I think BMW had a really good car, which is called the T-Rex, which is a hybrid. And the way the hybrid worked in that, diesel engines or petrol engines are actually really efficient if they run at the same RPM all the time. Now, ICE engines are actually really efficient when they run at a set RPM. And what BMW actually did with their hybrid is actually the car run on batteries all the time. And in the boot, they had a little petrol diesel generator, whatever it was, and it just run at that 800, 1000 RPM consistently. The reason they called it a T-Rex because it was a range extender, that's what it was all about. And I believe using a mix of technologies is how we're gonna make the best use of all the resources that we do have. Now a lot of companies out there have done a lot of research on synthetic fuels, BMW, Lamborghini, and things like that. Because to think about all this waste that we've created, if we get rid of all the petrol cars, all the diesel cars, all those vehicles, we have all that embodied energy required to pay back as well. So maybe a synthetic fuel might be a better solution. I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm pretty excited to be involved in everything that's going on in the world. Like what a time to be alive, all the technology we have available to us and everything's happening so fast. I'm pretty excited. If you really want to follow this journey about the sodium ion battery, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see some behind the scenes and some exclusive content, get over and join the Off Grid Tribe community. Thanks for watching. Until next time, guys, stay energized.